Hello LEGO fans! Welcome to LEGO 48, my YouTube channel where I will be chronicling my adventures in building great ball contraptions, also known as GBCs. Today I want to talk about the GBC standard and in baskets, or as I like to call them, input hoppers. So the GBC standard, and there's a link to this after the video description, basically says that every GBC module needs to have an in basket, that the module will move balls from the in basket to the next module's in basket, and those in baskets will be in line with each other. The in baskets should be 10 studs by 10 studs with an 8 stud by 8 stud opening, and should be 10 bricks tall. Two comments here. First, this is specifying two different things. The minimum size of the opening and the maximum height of the in basket. Second, it isn't necessary for the basket to be a perfect cube as specified. You can think of this like a basketball hoop, with an 8 stud by 8 stud opening that just happens to be 10 rows above the surface. If you're dumping balls from your module into someone else's, you have to dump them into that 8 by 8 opening and their in basket can be anywhere underneath that opening. There's a little ambiguity as far as how those 10 rows are defined. There's some question as to whether you're allowed to have a base plate in addition to the 10 rows of bricks, and whether that limit includes the studs on the top row of bricks. Personally, I think the answer to both of those should be yes, but that's really just my interpretation. As a general rule, the recommended approach is to build modules that output at a height of 11 bricks, allowing for other people's modules that, that will push the definition a little bit. On the other hand, Recognize that the module before yours may be more conservative and be prepared to deal with that. Later on, I'll show you my approach to this. Moving on, rule three. The front of the basket should be no more than 32 studs from the back of the module. This will allow all modules to be lined up against a wall. The back of the module can be closer to the basket, but not further. I typically build my input hoppers on 32 by 32 or 16 by 32 base plates. By locating the in basket at the front edge of the base plate, the back edge of the base plate shows me where the limit is for my module. Rule four, the in basket should be located on the left side of the module and output should go to the right. This just provides a standard direction for building modules so modules can be daisy chained together. By rule, all GBC modules should move from left to right when you're looking at the module from the front. Rule five, there are no size limits beyond those listed, which is nice, but as a practical matter, remember that if you're going to display a module at a show, your module will probably be sitting on a standard conference table, which is probably only 30 inches by 60 inches. Finally, each module should be able to accept balls at an average rate of one ball per second. Balls can be passed continuously or in a batch. A batch should not exceed 30 balls. This means that your input hopper needs to be able to receive up to 30 balls at a time, and if it receives them all at once, it needs to be able to move all those balls out of the hopper within 30 seconds. So now let's take a look at my first input hopper, which looks like this. What I've done here, which I think is really neat, is I wanted the floor of the hopper to be slanted so gravity would help feed the balls. That was really tough to figure out how to build Lego on an angle until I decided to build it in two separate parts. Three walls of the hopper are fixed, while the front wall and floor are built as a separate unit. That is joined to the rest of the module by a hinge at the front and just rests inside the back part of the hopper. This has two big advantages. One, I can lift it up in case I need to work on it. And two, the sweeper bar is driven by an axle that runs the length of the floor plate to the cross axle at the front. The cross axle actually creates the hinge as well as picking up power from the motor. Very simple. If I run this, I can drop 10 balls into it and you can see how the sweeper arm resolves jams while the built-in spacer spits out balls at approximately one ball per second. I can show you how this is built in a little more detail with my second input hopper. This one doesn't have a spacer built into it because it's going to be connected to a lifter module that has its own integrated spacer. 
Starting with a 16 by 32 base plate, we'll start with four rows that are 10 by 10, located in the front left corner of the base plate. The next two rows are going to be left open at the front. Also, I'm using technique bricks here because somewhere on row six, I'm going to want to attach pins that will support the floor of the hopper. Where I put them exactly depends on the design of my hopper and how much slope I want it to have. In row seven, I use some inverted slope bricks to expand the size of my input space. Row eight has a double row of bricks going around it and then one layer of plates on top for additional stability. Row nine has these sloping pieces that will help funnel balls from the opening to the floor of the hopper. Because of the extra row of plates in row eight, row 10 is now limited to only being two plates high, but that's okay. I'll put in two rows of plates, but if I encounter a module that is built right at the conservative 10 brick height limit, I can get below that simply by removing one layer of plates. And because of the outward sloping, I would still have enough capacity to easily hold 30 balls. Finally, I have a mounting bracket in the front, which the floor plate will attach to. These two pieces have pins in them, and I'll connect them with a long technique brick to help stabilize the link between the front and back sections of the hopper. Here's the floor plate. As you can see, it's basically a bunch of tiles. There are some sloping pieces around the outside so balls won't get stuck out of reach of the sweeper arm. I've got some wedge pieces here leading to an arch, and then I've got this little sweeper piece that rotates to keep balls from jamming or blocking each other. Up front is the drive gear, which is the connection to the external power. Looking at the bottom of this, here is the sweeper shaft, and it uses a bevel gear to pick up power from the central drive shaft here. And this picks up power from the cross axle, which not only connects to the drive gear, but also serves as the hinge. This whole module then connects to the mount by these two bricks here. Yes, there's a little bit of a gap here at the back, but as long as this edge is below the bottom of the sloped bricks, balls won't be able to hang up here and it won't be an issue. Now, I know you're looking at this and thinking, the standard says 10 rows high, but I've only got two rows of capacity here. And that's true. But let me show you something. Here's two rows of eight by eight capacity. Here's a cup with 30 balls in it. And if I dump them in gently, two rows is really enough to contain all 30 balls. My input hopper is eight by 12 at the top. And even though it narrows down at the bottom, it's still at least 30% more capacity than this eight by eight. So I should be able to handle at least 40 to 45 balls without an issue. Earlier, I kind of glossed over how the sweeper shaft is put together. So let me show you that now. I start with a pair of two by six technique plates that are attached in a cross pattern. Then on top, I add a two by two round tile with a hole in it. Next, I take a five stud axle with an end cap on it and I add a bushing, then the 12 tooth bevel gear, and then this goes through the technique plates. On the top side, I'm going to add a half bushing and then the sweeper bar. Technically, this piece is called a bionicle eye, but to me, it's just the sweeper. So now that we've got this all together, let's turn it on and see it in action. I can dump in 30 balls and you can see the sweeper keeping the balls in motion and running out through this channel. And we should be able to empty this in under 30 seconds. Just like that. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful.